Hey, good morning. Yeah. All right, man, this is a great verse. Uh, who'd have known? Who'd have known? I was led to go to a certain verse today, and, uh, you know, but, you know, basically it was the chapter, well, specific verse, and then I started going down the chapter, other verses, and then felt his spirit on this one. And, uh, you know, I'm actually going to read some verses before it and after it, but I'm not really going to take any words back. I don't need to. You're going to understand it. You, you know, and I'm not saying, look, <laughs> I'm not better than anybody. I know it. Look, I'm just a willing vessel, uh, I, I, you know, giving myself over to his service. I've been employed by him through that gift of his Holy Spirit. And um, as we're all to do, to, to pr produce fruit, but we're not saved by works, lest any man should boast. But a good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. I mean, he it's a connection. And the thing is, uh, Satan, is it, it's done in darkness through deception, and uh, you don't even realize what's going on. And, and But with the Lord God, you're awakened spiritually, you become conscious. Like he says, everybody who's not, connected to him spiritually, spiritually connected to him, they're the walking dead. They're breathing unconsciously. Okay? They, they're speaking and acting out unconsciously. And, you know, uh, but but the light and darkness, anyways, this verse will, 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 will reveal it all. And, and this is so vitally important, especially now at this time. Um, yeah, I got my glasses. All right. This is 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. And the verse I really felt the Spirit was verse 18. And uh, we've all heard it, no doubt about it. But uh, <clears throat> I'm going to read verses 15 through 19 uh, in their context. But once you hear uh, verse 18 and, and what's all contained in it by taking a deeper inspection of his word, being led by a Spirit. And that's the thing, you got to be led by a Spirit. There's a, let no man teach you, only the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God can lead you into all truth and righteousness. Uh, only the Spirit can reveal spiritual truth. And that's the thing. It's the hardest thing for men to do is to let go of this world and the things of it. It is almost impossible. Uh, we're too full of pride in our own knowledge and understanding. And look, and I, and I, look, I, I let my emotions get, I, I'm a sinner just like everybody else in the world, right? I deserve my punishment. It's just. Um, but uh, the thing is this, uh, I'm just like at work, you know, I'm, I'm willing to get my hands in there and get dirty and do what's right. But because I don't work for my boss or the company necessarily, I work for God. So I want to do the best I can do. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I can learn, th like in my work, they group together a bunch of different trades and call us mechanical technicians, which was a big mistake on their part because our job is so dangerous. So many people have died in my plant just in the last year. Three, four people died. Many people being maimed, losing fingers and, you know, uh, had a guy get his calf muscle almost completely ripped off. I mean, there's just, there's just so many things. And you don't even have to do something wrong. It's someone who's working next to you or, or things have been jumped out or bypassed on the machinery or equipment we're working on, which we don't realize, even though we may have it locked out and all that, you know, um, it's, it's just, there's so many things, you know, that could really hurt you. Right. And, um, uh, but I learned something from every single person, you know, that I work with. I learned little things. And even our supervisors that are really, some of them are really great and intent, you know, they're, they're Christian people, and so they really care about their job. And you learn things from them. You pick up these little treasures. And, and this is what we're, we're, we're picking up these spiritual truths, these treasures from heaven when we're born again of the Spirit, born again of the Spirit. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again of the Spirit from above, joined to the Spirit of God. And that's only done through Christ, putting your full trust, faith, and confidence in Him, what He accomplished on the cross, who He said He was, came here to reveal the truth, not conceal it. So that should be a big light bulb right there. Okay, so anyways, here we go. Let's read this. This is uh, 1 John 2, 15 through 19. But when I get to verse 18, I'll take it back. But the other words, I'm not even going to take it because you can understand it the way it is. And especially once I, I go through verse 18. And it ain't me. It's it's just being connected to God. You know, and, and he gives this to everybody freely. He offers it, right? He sets that showbread in front of your temple to see if you're going to take it in and consume it, right? Man does not survive the uh, uh, bread of alone, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, right, through his Holy Spirit and through Christ being joined to him, you know, 
So anyways, drinking in the living water, taking it in, uh, you know, but. So here we go, 1 John 2, 15 through 19. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So there you go. The, the world loves its own, but if you belong to Christ, you've been separated, set apart, distinguished, set apart in this world. We're in it, but not of it. We, and people in the world will hate us. Like Christ said, expect to be treated like him. So there's that. And that means even by the church, even by people who call themselves Christians. I mean, all kinds of things, right? So it, you got to understand that. And, and it, it's, it, it stinks in a way. But, you know, it is what it is. Anyways, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of this life, this life, this fleshly, temporary, physical life is not of the Father, but is of the world. It is of the world. Okay? Now verse 17. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God will abide with him forever in everlasting life, having true life, you know, in God's spiritual kingdom, in his heavenly kingdom. So, now verse 18. Little children. Now this is, look, when you look up the word, H430, Elohim, as it was mistranslated in many verses. Psalms 82.6, I have said you are all Elohim. It says that, Psalms 82.6, I have said you, this is God speaking to King David, I have said you are all Elohim, children of the Most High God. So Elohim are the children. And if you look up the word, H430, it does not say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It does not, like we're taught by men in church. It says, angels, judges, magistrates, special possessions of the supreme God, gods and goddesses with a small g. So there's that. I mean, if you understand that, the Bible will open up to you in a way that is just amazing. And you've got to allow yourself to be taught through his spirit to see the spiritual truth that's contained in it. But that will help you get going for sure once you understand that. Okay, so you need to take a more continued inspection of his word. Like he says, if you love me, you will abide in my word daily. Take a more continued, earnest, meaning genuine, uh, humbling yourself before God, willing to be learnt, taught by God himself through that gift of his Holy Spirit and let go of some of the things we've been taught by men. Not all of it, but a lot of it, man, because men are deceived. They're too full of pride in their own physical being, their own flesh. They've overstepped the boundaries of a created being. Too full of pride. Conceit, conceit in their own knowledge and leaning on their own understanding from a fleshly carnal perspective. You've got to let go of all that. Otherwise, you'll never see it. There's that. So, so there's that. So now, uh, verse 18. Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard, as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. Now, you know, that, that really doesn't, you know, I, you know, I understand the Mandela effect, okay? This is why it's so vitally important you've got to be taught by the Spirit. And I'm not even going to get into that. True Shock TV, many other channels do a great job. They even show you the residual evidence, other writings, other sermons that were recorded or written in other books that say exactly the way the verses were originally, and if you don't think things can supernaturally change, then I guess you don't believe that, you know, supernatural healings and everything else can occur either, you know? Come on. Uh, I know he said his word never changes, but his word is Christ. He is the word that has made flesh. Now, I'm not saying the original scriptures changed. I highly doubt that they did. Matter of fact, I'm sure they're preserved perfectly that were originally written by the apostles and prophets and disciples of Christ, right, and men who were enveloped completely in his Holy Spirit, right, led by God himself. I'm not saying those, but what we've written, what men's translated it by, okay, if you're looking to that and worshiping that ink and paper and book, you're worshiping the wrong thing. Yeah, you know, it's, it's it'll help lead you to the truth, but unless you take a deeper study led by his Spirit, you know, you, you're going to miss some things. And so many pastors quote it was always the lion shall lay with the lamb, Isaiah 
11, 6. And there's just tons of residual evidence. Sermons that were recorded, big books that were written, that it still has the verse in its original context, you know, and all the plaques and everything around the world. But yet there's pastors and ministers, some some who are really good, you know, but they they it's like they can't even see it. They can't even they can't even see it anymore. Well, they're deceived because they've been deceived. I'm not saying they're not saved, but they've been deceived, man. They just they just refuse to believe. Anyways, I'm not even going to get into it. So here we go. Let this verse. I'll read it one more time. Little children, it is the last time, as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So this is the way His Holy Spirit laid it out. There. And man, He walked me right through this. You know, and he was telling, I mean, like sometimes he just takes over and I write and then I'll go back and look at the words and take them back to the meanings, you know, through BDB, Thayer's, Mount Strong's, all that. And I'll see the exact words he just, you know, downloaded into me, basically, infused into me. So there's that. And I'm no better than anybody. I'm just a willing vessel. That's all. Like I said at work, I'm not the best millwright there is, but I'm just willing to get in there and get dirty and mix it up. And I listen. I uh, listen. And it's taken me a while to listen to other people and really think through what they're saying so as I don't make a mistake. You know what I mean? And, and I've made many, and that's how you learn most of the time when we screw up, right? So anyways, <clears throat> First John 2, 18. All of you immature children that are worshiping false gods, this is the last call. This is the last call. And that's funny, last call at a bar, last call. This is the last call to come back to me, to come back to God, to follow him, you know, following Christ, to follow me, to find your way home, so you can find your way back home, because this isn't our home, it's not our place of origin, it's not our first estate, we're all foreigners, sojourning here, exiles, that's what the Bible says we are, so understand that, that's literal, it's literal, okay, to be with me, this is so, to find our way back home and be with him, having our existence with him, with the self-existent, eternal, one true God, as one of his children, a restored member of his family, dwelling so we can dwell in his heavenly kingdom by placing our hope and our faith in the gospel, in the good news, by believing his word, especially the gospel. So you will not perish, be eternally separated from God, suffer the second death, okay? By by continuing in your own ways, okay, so so we can be with him, okay, and not perish, be eternally separated from him, but and we're eternally separated from him by continuing in our own way, being turned, so we need to be turned back to God one by one, while we are down here in a, a inferior state and condition while we're down here in place and time with respect to this covering of flesh being against our own selves and against God, against his spirit because the spirit wars against the flesh. The flesh belongs to this world. It belongs to it. It's connected to it. And that's what's so hard to separate ourselves from, right? Being in opposition to God as well. Okay, in opposition to our own selves and in opposition to God. Because what what we what we think is right and true, leaning on our own carnal fleshly understanding, is is against our the better judgment, right? And against God. It's in opposition to God. As all of us and all of creation came out of God, came from God. Like He He created everything. He's in charge of everything, okay? So there's that. But Satan was given dominion over this world for a time, and he deceives you and runs you through your carnality, your flesh. So there's that. Okay. So that all of creation, all of us, came out from God, came from God. Okay. We are as sojourners, sojourners, okay, uh, a pilgrim, and when you look up the word sojourner, like what it can also mean, a pilgrim. So you left your home country to go to somewhere else. A wanderer is is like synonymous with sojourner. A pilgrim, a wanderer, and it also said a worshiper of another. A worshiper of another. Someone who has left their homeland 
And it's funny because don't we have a department called Homeland Security? They're trying to deceive us and keep us locked in here, completely deceived in a state of doubtfulness and chaos and confusion and fear and anxiety, right? It's so crazy. So we have left our homeland to live and conduct business in a foreign land. Temporarily, temporarily, this world is temporary, okay, temporarily. And we have placed our faith and hope in the inhabitants of this foreign land. Uh, we are dependent upon their goodness, which they have none, okay, for our continued existence, okay. And what's the government trying to do now? All the governments of the world come together as one, right, we can see it clearly, and uh, force us into compliance with their ideologies, ideologies with their idols, with the things that they deem are important and all, all these all these things. And if you don't, you're going to be done away with. And they want to do away with this anyways, but because they only want a certain number of people left if you know the George Guidestones, what's written on all this thing. Anyways, it's all their agenda. It's nothing but death and destruction. So anyways, and you can see it. I mean, look at what's going on. So there's that. Okay, so We've left our first estate and we've placed our hope in the inhabitants of a foreign land here. And we're depending on their goodness, for which they have none, especially for God's people, okay, for our continued existence, to which you have given yourselves over to. We've given ourselves over to this world, becoming a slave to it and to them, the inhabitants of this world, uh, in our own bodies. And it can also mean spiritually our own physical forms, our own bodies which belong to the earth, which are of the flesh, being taken captive mentally by it, by our own bodies, and by the things of this world. Belonging to them, selling ourselves into slavery, slavery into this wicked world, this system of the beast, from its fleshly, bestial, animalistic, self-serving nature, which is at war against the Spirit of God and his heavenly kingdom, and all those who are joined to him. Okay? It's a battle of good and evil. Thinking you would gain an advantage to try to raise yourselves up, to try to come up another way, without God's wisdom and guidance, making yourselves your own gods, your own kings, your own judges and magistrates, doing so to serve ourselves, our own fleshly lusts and desires, falling, therefore, into sin, Casting our lot, our future, in with this fallen world. Giving ourselves wholly over to it. Firmly fixed to it. Standing firm on it mentally and emotionally. Being attached to this world. Living and loving a lie. Living and loving the strong delusion. Believing the strong delusion. But it is not true life. It is not eternal life. From which we have ignorantly chose to depart from. Like the prodigal sons. We're all the prodigal sons. We threw away our inheritance. We threw away eternal life and took on these physical forms. Temporary, dying, decaying tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, is our bodies. It's our bodies. We partook of the fruit from the tree, the fruit of the womb. We are birthed into a physical form. Okay, there's that. We ignorantly chose to depart from our heavenly kingdom, destroying our union and fellowship with God. Spiritually, spiritually, that's why we have to be restored and have our relationship with God reconciled, restored. And it's only by putting your faith and trust in Christ. He is God incarnate. He's the word that was made flesh. He came here to reveal the truth to us so we can find our way back home by following him. So there's that. There's that. Okay, so you are at the end of this temporary system that separates the light from the darkness. The light of the truth and all that is pure and good from the deception of sin, which is darkness, you know, the darkness of willful ignorance, and the temporary folly, the temporary folly, ignorance, foolish things of reveling, reveling in it, reveling in the things of this world. And he told me to look up this world, reveling, meaning enjoying yourselves, and look it up, you'll see it for yourself, enjoying yourselves deriving pleasure temporarily from lascivious living, drinking, dancing, partying, having sex, serving ourselves, separate, with celebrating our sin of this spiritual fornication, separating ourselves from God, like, like a divorce, and I've seen that in the Bible. It was like a divorce, right? And we're to be married to Christ, joined back to him in union with him and his cause, to join him and his cause and follow him. Okay, so there's that. 
We have, ri we have risen up in rebellion against the Most High God. In, in the Latin, this word reveling means to rebel, to rebel. That's what it means, to rebel. We're all rebels here in this world when we're born into it. Okay? Against the one true God. We're a rebel against the one true God as an immature child, lacking wisdom, lacking wisdom. Okay? Blending in and falling into the darkness of sin. Blending in with it. Being covered in darkness, the darkness of willful ignorance of our flesh. Okay? In the sense of con contiguity. Con contiguity. Okay? And this is word 2078. He, told, he made that word stand up, contiguity. So by having direct contact with it, with this world, being stimulated mentally and many other ways maybe, being stimulated by it, by being associated with it mentally and emotionally. And in the Latin, it means by touching. In the Latin, it means contiguity, means by touching, by touching, taking the fruit. Did, what did Satan say to Eve? Did God say thou, you know, thou shall not touch it, you know, or take it, you know, eat it or touch it, right? By touching, it's contiguity, by touching it. And then that says go to contiguous, you know, in the Latin, and it's led to do this by the Spirit, being in contact with it to befall, befall, which means to experience something that is bad, to fall, to suffer in a bad sense, suffering bad consequences from doing this taking the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right? And being birthed into a physical form. Taking possession of these physical forms, both mentally and emotionally, uh, and being attached to all the external things of this world that are hollow and vain, that promise joy, peace, and security, but they cannot deliver by this promise. Only God can. Becoming a friend to it, a friend to the world, clinging to it with all your might, and all it has to offer, being deceived by it, by this relationship with it. This is the final moments of it. It's the final moments of it, of separating this light from the darkness. It is time for a reckoning. And this was all, I think that was even in the Strong's. It is time for a reckoning. And he told me to look up that word. To settle an account, to avenge and punish its sins. The sins of all who are of the same opinion joined to this world, who've been deceived by it, okay? It's time to give an account for what they have received, which is these bodies of flesh, okay, that belong to this world. It is time for God's judgment. The time is now at hand. And this, you know, why he led me to this verse? Because we're there, we're there. Okay, the time is at hand. So then, as you have heard the truth about all who've strayed from the path of righteousness, the straight and narrow way, uh, we need to turn back to God through putting our faith and trust in Christ. Uh, to do so with all speed. And this is all in the, contained in the, you know, uh, translations, BDB, Thayer's, Miles, Strong's of these words that are in here. You can see these things for yourself. Okay? But, these people have not heeded the warnings that have been sent from those who have been set up as God's watchmen in order that whosoever can turn away from the deception of this world and turn back to their Heavenly Father and ask His forgiveness, okay, and receive His same life-giving Spirit so we can be saved from destruction, eternal separation from God to perish, to perish, okay, by rejecting the truth. All who've chosen to believe a lie and have become one with the adversary of the Messiah, their Savior and delivery, Deliverer, they have become his opponent, throwing their lot in with Satan, with the things of this world. They are in contrast, in opposition with his spirit. The flesh wars against the spirit. Okay, they have substituted one thing for another. They have substituted it. They've given away eternal life and joined themselves to temporary life because they love sin. They love the world. They love the world, and they're connected to it totally. Okay, They are against those who've been anointed by God and are at one again with Him. Therefore, they are against God and all who belong to Him. They are influenced by Satan, and they love this world. So they follow Satan, being led astray to fall. Like, and that was found in the word shall come, 2064, that was in this verse. Uh, and the world passed away and the lust of it, 
or no, little children, it's last time as you've heard that Antichrist shall come. So this is just crazy that all this is contained in there. That's why he says, if you want to know the truth, take more continued inspection earnestly, giving yourselves over to him to be your teacher, right? And it will be revealed to you spiritually, which only the spirit can do, okay? Being led astray to fall. Likewise then now, at this time, they that will not receive what they need to recover from their fall into sin by being deceived of the things of this world, which include all the fleshly things, you know, cars, homes, riches, pleasures, lusts, our own bodies even, which would inclu be included in that. Okay, they are assembling together as one to be brought to an end, to be brought to an end, to be destroyed. All together, this large group of people are, are antichrist. They are adversaries of the Messiah and God and all those who belong to him. And for this reason, for this cause, they have been they have omitted, they have omitted themselves from having true life, eternal life, and God's heavenly kingdom. Their own choice, their own free will. So this being resolved, who belong to God and who belong to Satan by their own choice. Okay, we now know and understand by seeing this division of the light from the darkness that it is the end of this rebellion. So this is the end of this rebellion against God. So there's that verse when you take a deeper study. Uh, 1 John 2, 18. Now, let's finish this with verse 19. And I'm just going to read it the way it is. And you should, should understand it now. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, connected to God through the gift of his Holy Spirit, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out, you know, destroying the union and fellowship just like we did with God, okay, that they might be made manifest that they were not all, each and every individual of us. They were not connected to God through the gift of his Holy Spirit. They were not of us, okay? They're of this world. They're not of us. They're of this world. And unfortunately, it's the majority, and it, and it made that clear. The, this large group of people, the larger, the bigger portion, they're completely joined to this world. They're deceived by it. They're living and loving a lie. The strong delusion is the whole world and what we've been taught our bodies are in this world. It's just a purification system. God gives you free will. You can choose to be with them or choose to be without them. So you have no argument. You're, you're, you're separated and you've omitted yourself. You're separated from him eternally. You're going to suffer punishment now. And so he's saying, right now is the time. Make that decision. Turn back to him. Take a deeper study of his word. Depend on him to teach you. Be joined together to his Holy Spirit. And understand those who he set up as watchmen to give out the truth in these final days, in this last time. We are all antichrist. We're joined to Satan if you live living and loving a lie in this world. We're God's children. We're God's children who've been led astray. And he allowed us, he told us not to do it because he didn't want us to suffer and all that. And he chastises those he loves. So understand that. So when people ask, why is there so much pain and suffering and bad things happen to good people and all this, you know, they don't understand the truth because the church has hidden it because they, when it was translated from a fleshly perspective, they're, they're, they've overstepped the bounds of a created being. They're too prideful in our own physical forms in the things of this world. They're joined to it. They can't see the truth. <laughs> you know, and unfortunately, it's a lot of people in church. You know, and, uh, you know, and only God can judge correctly. Thank God, because I know I can't, man. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's rough. Only God can see their true intentions of their heart and everything, right? So there's that. You've got to separate, separate, be separated from the things of this world, which include your own physical form. Image of the beast that speaks to you all day long from his carnal, bestial, animalistic, self-serving nature. There's that. Just pleasuring yourself. Right? And this world promises joy, peace, and security. The things of this world, if you store up all these things, you become wealthy. That's why it's harder for a rich man to go in to get into the kingdom of God than to go through the eye of a needle. Right? Did I say that right? Anyways. But in the, you don't think of a needle like a sewing needle. It was a place where basically a wealthy man would have to, you know, stoop down and push, drag, pull, unload his camel, take off all the things it's carrying, all the things of this world, let go of them, take them off, right, to get 
into the marketplace so they can buy and sell, so they can receive these treasures from heaven. I mean, there's just so much spiritual revelation in God's word. It's so amazing. You know, take joy in that because the, the things of this world are hollow and vain and lead to destruction. So there's that. There's that. It's the truth. If you love this world, the love of the Father is not in you. Mm -hmm. Clear as, it says it, clear as day, right there. Okay, so, and if you're not, the world will hate you. Those who are joined to this world, and, and they're not necessarily evil people. They're just joined to this world. They're deceived. They're living and loving a lie. There's that. All right, so there's that. Uh, our job is to plant seeds, stir the minds of men, right? So they'll take a deeper study of God's word and look into it. And I feel I've been called to do that. I know I have. I know I have because he speaks to me and I know I hear his voice. I know that's literal. It's not like I think something. You know, I might not see things perfectly clearly when he reveals them to me, you know, uh, cert certain dreams or visions or, or, or whatever that he gives me, you know, at the moment. But in hindsight, I'm like, oh, man, you know. But sometimes I do. <laughs> no doubt about it. No doubt about it. Um, I've matured over the years, that's for sure. That's for sure, as we all are. It's, it's, it's a journey. It's a journey. You know, and just like my work, I'm constantly learning things. Even though I've been doing it for 28 years, I'm still learning things. And I can still learn things from people who may not even be Christian or whatever, whatever. But I can still pick up truths. God can use anybody at any time because he created all of it. He's in charge of all of it, right? But he's given us a choice, good and evil, light, darkness, you know, belong to him and his kingdom or love and live a lie in this world and be eternally separated from him. It's your own choice. And he's telling you right now is the time judgment's at hand. Time for judgment. It's the end. It's the final call is what I see, what his Holy Spirit told me. This is the final call right now because judgment's coming. There's that. There's that. And I look forward to it. I look forward to going home and people think I'm nuts and they don't like me and they, they think this guy's just crazy and blah, blah, blah. He's going to do something weird or damn. Look, man, we're, we're, we're in the world but not of it. So enjoy the beautiful things that God blesses us with while we're here, every moment, you know, but but understand we're, we're not part of it. We're not part of the world, right? So, and there's a big difference between good and evil and doing simple things and serving yourself rather than serving God and serving others and for the greater good of everybody so we can have eternal life in paradise and perfection that we were led away from deception, thinking we could become like the Most High God without being connected to Him, <laughs> without His wisdom and guidance and love and mercy and everything else. So there's that. All right. God bless you. Have a great day. Bye.